fellow Destiny lore nerds. Welcome to a new series that I hope gains some traction. I've wanted to do something like this for a long time, but between having a life and a family as well as other obligations, I've put it off. So let's give this a go once and for all. Let me know what you honestly think. If I get enough positive feedback, I'll do more. Heck, I may even do more anyway. With that out of the way, let's actually discuss what I'm talking about. Not to mention explain why the heck you're even watching this video. I love Destiny, and I really love Destiny lore. The story, the backstory, the side stories, you name it. I love talking about it, thinking about it, writing about it. Yeah, it's a problem. Through my research and discussions with others, the topic I enjoy the most is what I call weapon and item trivia. I don't call it lore per se, simply because most of the flavor text or names of weapons don't have direct ties to the story or lore of Destiny. But I do feel strongly that the writer's purpose in all the weapon and item names and flavor text we see in game has a direct tie to their inspiration in creating the characters, actions, as well as interactions we see or hear about in the game. That is what I want to discuss with this series. The first weapon I would like to discuss in this series is actually the first weapon you get in game during A Guardian Rises. This weapon is also making a surprise comeback with the September release of Rise of Iron. This is an interesting item in that on the surface it doesn't seem to have any ties to the story or lore. But as we move forward in our discussion we will find that it actually does. The weapon I'm speaking of is the Kvostov 7G. Zero 02. This is a common white auto rifle and coveted by many. It has a neat little feature in the way of a cracked scope lens, which gives the player a real sense of just how old, worn, and thrown aside the weapon is. Sadly, like all other common white items in the game, it can only be obtained after starting a new character. Why do I use the word sadly to describe the obtainability of this weapon? I mean, it's clearly not that great. With a fire rate of 62, impact of 20, range of 12, which puts it roughly at the end of the muzzle, and with a stability stat of 30, that's about the same as a tightrope walker crossing the Grand Canyon during a mild earthquake. The Kvostov 7G02 is the only weapon in its class archetype given the rate of fire to impact, and it's just an all-round cool weapon. If you're like me and don't have one of these to play with, the closest thing we have in game at current, June 2016, patch 2203, is the Velt AR-3. Bear in mind, the Velt has a higher rate of fire than the Kvostov, so it will probably be a bit less stable. Anyway, okay. moving on. I need to find you a weapon. Remember oh, earlier when I said that the crack scope gives the player a real sense of just how old worn and thrown aside the weapon is well focus fire chat community member taylor b brought up a cool theory that i would like to share with everyone he feels this weapon was not just tossed aside left by some ancient russian soldier who died while sneaking a nap between his turn at watch actually if you think about it this is a pre-golden age weapon much like the soldier that would have been insane enough to use it Hundreds, if not thousands of years have passed since this weapon was made or used. Why hasn't it rusted away to nothing? How does it actually still work? The weapon is found inside the wall of the Cosmodrome, sure. We know the purpose of this wall, and surely there were guards stationed at different points along its perimeter. But if you take a good look at the flavor text of the Kvostov, it actually gives some credence to this theory. An ancient weapon battered and worn, but it still fires true. Perhaps it's been waiting for you. To put all this in perspective, we need to understand what or who Kvostov is. A quick Google search will return links to loads of people having fun in the crucible with this subpar weapon. Not the sort of nonsense we're after, but Wikipedia comes to our rescue. This weapon is named after Alexis Kvostov. Born July 1st, 1872, and died August 23rd, 1918. Alexis was a Russian politician to the nth degree. This guy was a real dirty piece of work, to be honest. No one really liked him at all. 
When being judged by his peers for political offices, they claimed that he had many liabilities. He was repulsively fat. Look, their words, not mine. And was generally regarded as a scoundrel. Now, before anyone takes offense to the fat part I just mentioned, bear in mind that during this time in Russia, things were rough. Really rough. So to have some obese politician stand in front of you and your family and say, I know what's best for you, all the while you and your family slowly starving to death, yeah, that wouldn't sit too well with the general populace. Not to mention that he was an anti-Semite, which means he didn't like Jews, and we all know where that leads. That's not a road we're going to travel. But I'm no politician. I'm no political science major, nor am I a Russian historian. Hell, I didn't even stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. What do I know? So let me stick with the stuff I do know. Alexis basically conned and schemed his way up the political ladder that was Russian politics at the time. He made a lot of enemies on his way up, but he was normally too powerful for any of them to ever get back at him. For some reason, Nicholas II the last emperor of Russia was intrigued by Alexis for the position of Minister of Interior, which was a pretty high-level position. So Nicholas sent two of his closest cohorts to check him out for the office. Of the two people he sent, the first was simply to interview Alexis for the position, and the other, who was named Rasputin, was to gaze into his soul to see just what sort of person Alexis really was. Now, if you've never really dug into this topic, I know what you're thinking and your mind is probably blown right now. Let me just say that Raspy is a whole other video into itself. But suffice it to say that he has a, what's the right word, unworldly presence in Russian history? Yeah, for now we'll just stick with that. Now, Alexis had no idea who Rasputin was or just how much power, might, and influence he held. So Alexis, being the headstrong egomaniac he was, did not care much for Rasputin and showed it quite extensively during a dinner together. But once Alexis discovered who Rasputin was, he buddied up to him quite nicely. They actually worked together for the rest of Rasputin's, I don't want to call it a career, but I think you get the idea. Now let's take a step back and look over all this. We know that Rasputin is a central character in the story of Destiny. We know that there are ties between the real-world Kvostov and Rasputin. Who else in game do we know has a connection or a slight tie to Rasputin? That's right, the stranger. We know that she has accessed Rasputin's bunker many times. And this takes us back, full circle sort of, back to the theory I spoke about earlier. We know that the stranger has been searching for us through many timelines. We know that she is sort of guiding us from afar, if you will. Could it be that during one of her time jumps, she was able to go back far enough, grab a weapon named after a friend of Rasputin's who we later find is the most sought after pool of knowledge and power at the start of the game, and she just so happens to lay it in our path so that we may find it? Is it a clue? Is it a warning? Who really knows? But one thing is certain. The connections are there. What she is trying to tell us may not be crystal clear at the moment, but with the return of the weapon in Rise of Iron, we may soon learn a bit more of this story and connection. I, for one, cannot wait. I hope you enjoyed this first installment of Destiny Item Trivia with your humble host, Unisys12. You can find me on Twitter, at Unisys12, and in the Focus Fire chat, hiding in a room somewhere. If you have not heard of them, or have no idea what I'm talking about, head over to FocusedFireChat.com and give them a listen. There you should find a link to their band chat, as well as an invite link to their Discord server, where they have all sorts of fun stuff going on. While you're at it, hit that subscribe button. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Be sure to check out the video description below for links to all references made or used in this video as well as shout outs to awesome members of the FFC community that provided me Kvostov footage for this video. And with that, keep your arrows sharp, your sights clear, and your code clean.